Hello my fellow gamers and welcome to a showcase of upcoming indie strategy games. Here you will see everything from steampunk RTS and tactical RPGs to city building and simulation managers in space or on other planets. My name is Peter and if you want to learn about even more new strategy games, both indie and AAA, use this link up here or below to watch similar video lists. The first game I want to present to you is a city builder in which there are actual avalanches which are just as destructive as they are beautifully designed. Leisara Summit Kingdom. As its name suggests, in this game you get to build a kingdom of interconnected trading cities on tops and sides of unique mountains where your population farms, mines, builds bridges and digs shafts. With all this, the two-person development team behind the name Quite OK Games wants to give us a totally fresh setting and lots of fun gameplay mechanics, like for example managing avalanches and their potential damage by constructing barriers and even triggering them manually. This novel natural disaster for a game of this genre is but one of its many interesting features. There are complex resource management and transportation systems with production chains, a three-cast society with their various needs, harsh weather and the challenge of building a summit temple, but there is no combat or armies to play with. This is not the case in this next indie real-time strategy gem, which is currently being developed by Metal Adler Studio, because here war is the main theme. In Rattenreich, it is not humans who fight in all-out warfare, but rats, mice, roaches and lizards. The two warring sides are the Tsar Empire and Rattenreich, each with their own allies. Their tech is based on heavy industry and war-oriented, with dieselpunk and steampunk influences. Each race and faction has specific biological and technological advantages, like the roaches with their armored chitin, while the Sun Empire lizards are big on naval construction and sea domination. This game is planned to offer several single-player campaigns, multiplayer, dozens of units and a large variety of weapons, fortifications, as well as transportation and medical care for the injured. The environment will be fully destructible, adding to the chaos of war, while units can take cover and upgrade equipment. Special, faction-specific characters will help you gain access to more advanced weapons and tactics. Now, if you prefer playing a game where special characters are the main part of gameplay, and especially if it is turn-based, then King Arthur Knight's Tale by Neocore Games is a great choice. This hybrid between turn-based tactical games and traditional, character-centric RPGs with choices which matter is out of early access soon and has a great Arthurian mythology story twist to it. You play as Sir Mordred, nemesis of King Arthur, but your duel with him ended in a deadly draw. You both died, but he became an undead monster and you the unlikely hero who will defend the land and its many damsels in distress. I must admit, everything in this game reminds me of Wasteland minus the post-apocalyptic setting and modern weapons. A team of heroes chosen from six different classes is a must on this grand quest because of deep tactical battles which result in experience, new levels, skills and loot for the heroes. They can die due to injury, curses or diseases, but you can treat them in Camelot. One campaign playthrough is actually just a doorway to endgame here. From one medieval myth let's go to another with Sons of Valhalla a side-scrolling base-building strategy game being developed by Pixel Chest. Here you take on the role of a Viking's Jarl's son to conquer England and save the love of your life. The gameplay has two main elements, building and raiding. To have a steady supply of resources, arms and warriors to command, you have to build villages complete with wooden palisades and defensive towers, similar to gameplay in Terraria. When you go out, you take a raiding party with you and can give them actual combat orders, like the famous shield wall formation. There are also fire arrows which burn enemies and start fires, rams to bust gates with, and spears to throw and impale enemies. As you plunder and conquer villages and castles, you will inevitably run into boss fights, some against strong and mighty leaders, while others against more mythical creatures. 
If a post-apocalyptic setting is more to your liking, and if you're itching for a roguelite game, I would suggest looking into Ragtag Crew by Hardlane Studio. It is a turn-based tactical game in which there is quite a bit of bickering and bonding done between your characters. I haven't had the pleasure of enjoying something like this since Dragon Age Origins. Naturally, they all have different personalities and belong to different classes. What makes them a squad is that they are all scavengers, traveling the wasteland in pursuit of profit, food and whatever else they can find. There they fight against normal and boss type opponents whose strengths and weaknesses you must first learn in order to defeat them. Between these combat instances, different events will trigger and this will let you see, enjoy or suffer through the interactions between your team members. Their personalities and classes will drastically change the outcome of these memorable moments. Other events will let you discover more lore while helping random strangers, but they also might lead to your doom. If you are more of a micromanagement fan, I have a great game for you to look forward to. Star Deus. It is a sci-fi colony management simulator with aspects of automation, base building and space exploration, whose lone developer Codolinia has had a successful Kickstarter and even posted a demo version on Steam. Here you play as an artificial intelligence with robots and drones at your command, but no clear objective, so you can choose what to do. Build a space factory or spaceship, help humans create a colony, or turn them, Matrix style, into living batteries. The universe you play in is procedurally generated and you can explore it in your spaceship. There are different resources and crafting with quite involved production chains as well as electricity, oxygen and heat generation and distribution, economy, trade, stock market, threats and security measures. But wait, there's more! A full research tree, shuttle expeditions and actual on-the-fly story generation. All these gameplay systems work independently in order to create a deep and complex simulation which spits out emergency situations and unexpected events. And even more can be added with mods. Controlling robots is easy, but the headstrong humans have to be implanted with brain chips to obey orders. Because really, who wants to deal with their moods, mental breakdowns, obsessive compulsive disorders and phobias? And do you know what the phobia of outer space is called? Astrophobia. No, that is not the name of this next game. That would be The Crust. Not very descriptive, I know. So let me tell you more about it. It is a large-scale economical simulator with survival elements where you are a CEO of a gigantic moon colonizing company. The developers from Veom Studio want you to not only build a base on the moon, mine resources and try to survive in the harsh conditions of space, but also to create your own story. So they have added a flexible quest system that drives events throughout the game. There are vehicles which help you explore and exploit the moon and its resources, and there are different types of drones and cargo capsules. Some build, while others carry cargo, repair, dismantle or drill. Trading and resource exchange with Earth is an important gameplay aspect, as are the colonists with their particular characteristics and preferences which affect their behavior. It is up to you, as their CEO, to choose a profession for them and manage their schedules, while you can get specialists from the galactic market as well as more robots or vehicles. So in essence, it's almost a mix between going medieval and surviving Mars. To change both the genre and setting all at once, let's now talk about a tactical RPG set during the 12th century crusades. It's called Fate and Honor Barbarossa, and from what I could find, it's being developed by Encurio. They have been improving the game and its graphics for a number of years, all the time adding more features and complexity. Here you do not play as the mighty Barbarossa, but as Ulrich a son of a nobleman turned traitor, who might not be all that guilty. During Barbarossa's crusade, you will try to find out what really happened. On this journey, you will travel from Cologne all the way to the Middle East while mastering a tactical and turn-based combat system. There is melee with weapons and shields, as well as range combat, alongside some nifty environmental tricks you can use 
like shooting off a beehive from a tree branch. There is also management of resources involved in getting access to better armor and weapons. Besides Barbarossa, you will meet other historical characters and start to fill in the puzzle. Now before we continue with the rest of the list, and if you have been enjoying this video, I hope you won't mind me asking you to hit that like button, comment about which games caught your attention, and subscribe to see more such videos in the future. For the sci-fi and space fans among you, here is a single-player, real-time strategy, but also survival game in which you manage resources and take care of many starship crews. It is called Star Exodus and it is being developed by Dreamstorm Studios. Here you are sort of an admiral of a wandering fleet of ships akin to Adama from Battlestar Galactica TV show. To keep those ships in one piece and your species population alive, resources must be extracted, food and fuel made and carefully managed, while discovering and even fighting alien races. You can modify ships and meet and recruit other friendly ones, but the crews have their own minds and hearts as well as needs. Elements of space environment can be used to hide or trick the enemy, like lurking behind asteroids and catching enemies in ambushes with your battleships. Each ship can be customized and they hold a portion of your total resources. Losing them is a hard blow not just to fleet-wide crew morale, but also to your fleet management capabilities and resources. In this game, each playthrough will be different and you will be crafting your individual stories all the way to alternate endings. I know there is one game setting a lot of you love, but in which we rarely get to enjoy a good game. Cyberpunk. This is the setting developers from Three Brothers have chosen for their new tactical turn-based heist RPG called Cyber Knight's Flashpoint. In this game, you build a team of hackers, mercenaries and thieves, use powerful cyberware, shady connections, stealth, hacking and more to rise in the neon-soaked future as the most renowned company of shadow mercenaries. In the dystopian cyberpunk future of 2231, the interwoven narrative unravels through your actions and story choices, but it's also shaped by the characters' backgrounds. The journey also changes them, leaving lasting wounds and adding new traits. There are sophisticated multi-stage missions which combine stealth, hacking and combat. To build the perfect team to complete these, you can experiment with endless combos of cyberware, weapons and gadgets. Other gameplay mechanics include safe house base building complete with weapon shops, medical base and even hound kennels. The turn-based tactics are played out in gridless, third-person combat with cover, overwatch and recoil mechanics. In keeping with the sci-fi setting, let's look at another space sim in development by Propulsive Games. Space Rain is a mix of RTS fleet and first-person combat as well as ship customization and management of your own mercenary company. In it, you start with one ship, align yourself to a corporation and earn their trust by completing contracts. This way, you receive access to unique, corporation-specific arsenal of ships and weapons to grow your fleet with. Each ship, from fighters to large cruisers, and its every gun hardpoint, is completely customizable with weapons like kinetic projectiles and missiles. This also results in every ship part taking damage independently between compartments and systems, making it possible to disable or disarm and not just outright destroy ships. These gameplay elements are similar to what we had in Star Wolf's franchise and Nexus the Jupiter incident. What is unique is that you can take direct control of any of the ships currently in battle and fly it in first person. But combat is only half the fight in this game. Without the proper use of sensors and detection mechanics, the enemy can easily have the upper hand over you even with lower numbers and inferior equipment. And this is proven true in another upcoming indie turn-based strategy game being developed by After School Studio. In Cantata, you choose one of nine commanding officers from across three factions and explore, build, expand and fight on large maps in single player as well as local and online multiplayer. 
There is a spiritual and pragmatic war for survival for you to experience, but the game gives you all the tools to make your own scenarios and rule sets. The main gameplay is something of a mix between Alpha Centauri, Factorio and a number of other games. This is because, while it is based on square tiles, action points and turns, it also features supply chains, resource management and puzzle-like building construction and connections. To recruit a new type of a unit, it is not as simple as just having the right construction building. It also has to be supplied with all the parts made by factories, which in turn need resources to make those. I know this list was light on Forex games, so here is another one. Oziman Diaz. Its developers at the Secret Games Company, cool name by the way, are trying to pull off something new with their game concept. A Forex Empire building game for a single sitting. That is why this game features a faster than normal classic Forex gameplay aimed at players who like games of this genre but don't have the time required to invest in them. The setting is the Bronze Age, which is often skipped by similar games. What these developers have streamlined for the sake of saving gameplay time is actual combat. All the player has to do is to move armies and fleets into position with overwhelming force, aka power, and welcome home his victorious troops. What is left for you to manage is technology progress, unit production, food and wealth. The enemy AI is data-driven and flexible, so it can build flourishing empires in every environment and corner of the world, giving you a challenge with no cheating necessary. There are 8 handmade maps and quite a wide selection of empires to play with in single or multiplayer with simultaneous turns. Another game which features hand-drawn environments is Tribal, a party-based RPG with a fantasy setting based on traditions, real historical events, Slavic mythology and folk tales. It is being developed by V Code Lab and will feature traditional CRPG tactical combat with simultaneous planning of character actions designed specifically to improve upon the slow, turn-based gameplay, especially when playing in multiplayer co-op mode. The fantasy world of Rodenia is depicted by a hexagonal 2D world map and many isometric, handcrafted as well as procedurally generated locations. Event-driven narrative will allow you to travel freely throughout this world, find places of interest, trade and explore, and when an event is triggered, be transported to one of the isometric locations, so you can interact with the world, other characters or enemies in more detail. Each of your characters have their own inventories as well as slots for weapons and armor. There are multiple stats like morale, speed, energy, sight, stealth and even novel ones like hearing and concentration. Active effects like ones from potions or bleeding wounds are also present. The developers are aiming to release a free demo in the first months of 2022 together with a Kickstarter campaign, so keep this one on your radar. And speaking of radar, this indispensable technology is one of the most important military inventions of the modern world, which is the setting of world warfare and economics. A game by lone developer Lotos21, which is, as the name describes, about wars and the economies behind them. You pick one of 220 available countries to lead and then have a free hand in modifying its laws, economy, building of facilities and military bases, production, trade and diplomatic relations with other countries, going as far as shared control or the ISS in Earth's orbit. From health and housing to transportation and media and everything in between, your decisions shape the whole nation. Choose what to produce and trade to fulfill the demands of your population and increase the bank balance of your country. A trade partner went over the line, embargo them. An opposing country wants your territory and resources, preventively bomb them into the dark ages. Just make sure you have enough manpower and military hardware to fight out the ensuing wars between alliances like NATO and others in real-time battles. This brings us to the end of the showcase, but for more lists and previews of upcoming indie and also AAA games, check out these cards on the screen. Don't forget to hit the like button if you have enjoyed this video and subscribe to get notified when new ones are posted. Thank you for watching and happy gaming!